So here's my dilemma. As much as I enjoy shooting with this camera, it's quite big and quite clunky, and it's better as a handheld move around camera. Sometimes I want to dash mount stuff, and then I'm going to take it off the Joby, hang it on the dash, it's, it's a pain in the ass. To remedy that, I want to shoot with my iPhone. Sounds really simple, right? The problem with the iPhone is that the audio quality is really, really crap. It's like this. This is the audio quality on the iPhone. Not quite there, is it? So that's why generally I try not to shoot with the iPhone. You just have crap quality. The clever people at Rode have a solution for this. It's called a video mic for an iPhone. So I thought I'd get hold of one of these and try it. See, it comes with a fluffy as well. Mic comes with a few parts. You've got your wind deflector. And if you pop it out, it's just a little microphone like this. And it's directional, almost identical to the one that I've got on my camera at the moment. Except that it's got a little mini jack over there. And it comes with a goodie like that to clip in there. So now what you do, you take the bottom of your phone, plug it in like that, squeeze it down like that. And you have a microphone on the front of your iPhone. Now the audio quality sounds like this. Much better, right? So I'm going to use that for a couple of days and see how it works. Um, let me know in the comments below whether it's good or bad or crap. They're not too expensive. They're about about a thousand rand at Orms. So now when I'm driving, I can mount my phone on the dash. It doesn't distract me from driving and keep my eye on the road. And I have a good microphone, so I'm not worried about crappy audio. There's nothing worse than crappy audio in like a video. You know, you see a guy mumbling along, he's saying something, can't quite make out what he's saying in the back of what sounds like goats being slaughtered. Good audio in video is absolutely essential. Rather have a crap picture, good audio, than the other way around. So I've decided that I should probably get my ass into shape. Well, my ass and my rest of my body too. I'm normally heading to the office just after six in the morning. I try and get a few hours of work done before like the day starts and everybody gets in your case. It's magic by the way, you should try that. But I've decided to cut that short by actually heading to the gym first having a workout, having a shower, then get into the office. The problem for me though is it's like at 7.30 now, I've normally got about a half an hour, 45 minutes work in already. I'm having like a mild panic about being late. I have to keep reminding myself that it's like, it's only 7.30 in the morning. No like sane person is doing anything yet. So the Captiva goes back today and I'm gonna make a few comments about it before I send it back. I've probably been a bit harsh on the car. No, I complained about the engine noise and the seats could be more comfortable, etc, etc. But let's just take a couple of other things into consideration. It costs, the top of the range premium model costs less than 400,000 Rand, right? That's like the price of a 3 Series BMW. What you get for your 400 grand is a fully digital screen that comes with Apple CarPlay. You get yourself hill descent control, dual climate control, cruise control, keyless start. Uh, you get that funny key thing which in hindsight is actually quite brilliant because how often have I gotten into a car with a key and I end up jabbing it and poking it down there because that's how you used to start a car, right? They put the key there so it feels like a natural turn the key, start the car. Great, right? No hunting for a button because that I've done so many times. You get in a keyless car, you can't find the damn button to start the car. Actually, that goodie on the right there, that's probably not a bad idea. That's the more I think about it, the better an idea it is. The real kicker though, is that you get a seven seater. It's actually, engine noise and seats aside, it's actually a really, really good value proposition. It's not, it's not badly priced for what it is. I want to show you guys Apple CarPlay real quick. You basically plug your iPhone into the USB cable and CarPlay pops up. There are a bunch of apps that are native on the phone that then pop up on the on the car. So you can do phone calls, you tap there. Who should I ring for you? Marcus. Which Marcus? Marcus Beta. Oh, what? Marcus Beta. So it's all pretty much Siri operated as well. So you got music, your podcast now playing, audiobooks, Audible. Depending on the apps you've got installed on your phone, some of them are compatible with CarPlay, some of them not. There's your home button. It's actually really, really simple. So it just got to rocking and I've got a finance meeting now. Not terribly prepared for it, I'll be honest. The thing I like the most about running a business is just like 
developing cool stuff. So when you run a fiber company and you're selling people really hot internet, there's a certain sense of satisfaction that comes with just knowing that they've got something really awesome. And developing new products and figuring out how to get internet to places where there isn't really fast internet at the moment. That's the kind of stuff that excites me. Finance, going on the numbers, it's really important, but just so boring. The thing I like the most about running a business is just like developing cool stuff. So when you run a fiber company and you're selling people really hot internet, you, there's a certain sense, there's a certain sense of satisfaction that comes with just knowing that they've got something really awesome. And developing new products and figuring out how to get internet to places where there isn't really fast internet at the moment. That's the kind of stuff that excites me. Finance, going on the numbers, yeah. It's really important, but just so boring.